This is Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, the voice of hope. Ghana, voice of hope. Today's Daylight Magazine has segments designed with you in mind. Stay tuned and be blessed. When the trumpet all the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When his chosen ones shall gather over all. When the rule is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the rule is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the rule is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the rule is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up younger, when the roll is called up younger, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in flight saw. For our reflections, we shall look at Exodus chapter 31, verses 12 to 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, You must observe my Sabbath. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come, so you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. Observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it is to be put to death. Those who do any work on that day must be cut off from their people. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day is to be put to death. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it for the generations to come as a lasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever, for in six days 
The Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he abstained from work and rested. When the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the covenant law, the tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God. You just listened to the audio version of Exodus chapter 31 verses 12 to 18. What do you choose? Eternal damnation in hellfire or eternal life in a golden city? Hell was not made for any man but the devil. Dear listener, don't allow him to deceive you to sin to join him in hell. Accept Jesus Christ today as your personal Savior. Get baptized into a true Bible-believing church and live daily for the Lord with the help of the Holy Spirit. Your eternal life will be guaranteed. God bless you. Thank you, friend, once more for joining us on Healthy You. Now, last episode, we started with hypertension. We looked in simple terms at what it means to be hypertensive. We also learned certain facts about hypertension and realized that there are certain things that we can do that can contribute to we being hypertensive or not. Today, we won't continue with hypertension. But we'll look at the symptoms and prevention or treatment. These are some of the symptoms of someone who is hypertensive. The heart gets larger and this may lead to heart failure. Now the reason for which the heart gets larger is that because the tubes through which the blood that is pumped by the heart is going through are narrower than they should be. It means that the heart has to pump harder. And because it is overworked by pumping harder, it results in the heart becoming larger than normal. And this might end up in the heart just coming to a stop. You can also find blisters. Such people who are hypertensive, they have blisters in their brain. The blood vessels that passes through their brain, because... Sometimes there is a clot that is formed there. A small fat globule gets stuck there. And the tissues of the cells that make up the brain, they need this blood so much. The blood still has to go. It is blocked. So it forces its way. The pressure is so much that they just can burst. And that can result in a stroke in the brain. There can also be even kidney failure. Because blood vessels in the kidney becomes narrower than normal. There can be hardening of the arteries, especially in the heart, in the brain and the kidneys. For people who are pregnant, they can have sudden attacks of convulsion, which in medical fields they call eclampsia. They sometimes will be feeling of dizziness, aching or throbbing of the head. 
and then some funny ringing in the ears. These are all signs that manifest when someone is hypertensive. Normally, it will show up, not in early times, early days, when we are so youthful. It will normally show up after 35 years because it takes time for it to develop. Now, let's look at how we can prevent hypertension or if we have it, how we can manage it or treat it. Exercise has been proven to be one of the most effective ways of preventing hypertension because by exercising, you are burning down more fat. By exercising, you are helping the body to function at its maximum. And that saves the body from so much trouble. We looked at how smoking can affect or contribute to hypertension. So it is advisable to quit smoking if you do smoke. And then quit drinking if you take in alcohol. Now something that is also very simple that we can avoid or be very cautious about is the intake of sodium or common salt. Now... Every individual needs about half gram or one-fifth of a teaspoon of salt for a day. And friend, it will amaze you to know that this amount of salt actually occurs naturally in foods that we take. However, we can help with this mistake of taking extra salt by being a label reader. Because most of our foods are canned. It is important that we read the labels very carefully and select products that are low in sodium. We should watch out for words like salt, sodium, and soda and avoid taking these products that have these ingredients that I mentioned among their five ingredients. That is, should you take a certain product and the components of the product are listed on it on the label, read the label. If you find salt, sodium, soda among the first five lists of the ingredients on that particular product, then you have to avoid it. It means the salt in it is so high. Now, if we eat abundant of fresh and unrefined foods, what it means is that automatically we cut down the amount of salt and the fat in our diet. And this will also help us get protection because It will help in balancing the potassium in our body. It is also important that we note that there are certain foods that have hidden fats in them. And most of these, they are snacks that we like taking so much. I'll just take you through some few examples. We have a food like apple pie. A slice of it contains 500 milligrams of salt. Canned beans, a cup of it, contains 3,000 milligrams of salt. Potato chips, 7 ounces of it, contains 3,500 milligrams of salt. Tomato sauce, half cup of tomato sauce, contains 1,950 milligrams of salt. Canned tomato soup, a cup of it, contains 2,200 milligrams of salt. Corned beef, 3 ounces of it, contains 2,360 milligrams of salt. Fried chicken, a three-piece meal contains 5,600 milligrams of salt. I believe that, friend, as we hear these numbers, they are just staggering. But we are so fond of these foods that they are the very foods that we keep on taking into our system. Now, if we become careful concerning these foods, it will help protect us from a disease as dangerous as hypertension. We should take in more vegetables and more fruits. We should learn to handle stress. If you learn to handle stress, it will protect us from getting hypertension. We should avoid taking red meat and then taking more garlic because it thins our blood and it also helps to lower blood pressure. There are hypertensive drugs, but I will never advise you to take them or resort to them because they have serious side effects. They don't cure the hypertension. They only help in controlling it. They have side effects like depression, lack of sexual desire, impotence. They may even promote diseases like arteriosclerosis and diabetes. I believe our study of hypertension and the new things we've learned will put them into practice and it will go a long way in shaping our lifestyle for a healthy and wealthier life.
Thank you. This has been Oliver Ishen. Any inquiries or contribution, you can contact us on plus two three three two four four six seven three five two eight or zero two four four two three five zero one seven or email us at radio at vvu.edu.gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana PO Box AF five nine five Adenta Greater Accra Region Ghana. From heart, I like to say that I thank you. So thank you, Jesus, for the grace that you have given us. We can never be from my heart. Brothers and sisters, it is a pleasure to come to you again with the Word of God. Each time I pray that the Lord Himself will guide you so that each of the messages you hear here on the Moment of Truth will help you to make important life decisions so that you can give yourself to Christ and when He shall come, you and I will not be found wanting. But we will be able to raise our hands and say, Lord, we have waited for you for long and the Lord himself will take us into his glorious kingdom where we shall enjoy eternal life, where there will not be any problems again. Today, I am coming your way again with a very important issue. And I have captioned today's lesson. Oh God, why the tests? Oh God, why the tests? Christians, have always upheld the inevitable truth that God is love. Yes, you agree, you accept that God is love. But if God is love, why is this anti-God philosophies, such as doceism, pantheism, and all forms of anti-God philosophies that seem to claim that God does not exist, or God, after making the world, left the world in isolation. Brother and sister, we believe that God is love. That is the general view of Christians. And I want to affirm that from the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, we can see the real love of God. God, loving the world, gave out His Son, His only Son, to come and save a rebellious world. What love is more than this? Brothers and sisters, the God we worship or serve is love and that he will not suffer us to hit our feet against the stone. Then the big question that we can ask is that why 
do we go through tests in life? Yes, as humans, tests are bound to happen in our lives. But many a times, we, ter- we, we tend to mistake between what the Bible describes as, as tests and temptations. As tests and temptations. In the book of Genesis chapter 39, the whole chapter tells us about the story of Joseph. Joseph in the house of Potiphar was made one of the chief servants. And this was so because he trusted in the Lord. He leaned on the God of love and everything went on well with him. But we see a story of tests, of temptation here. In verse 6, we, 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 we get to know that Joseph was a well-built man. He was handsome, in other words. And so, the wife of his master, Potiphar's wife, fell in love, actually lasted after David, uh, after Joseph, brothers and sisters. And so, she devised a means of getting him to bed with her. But because the Lord of love was with Joseph, Joseph was able to resist it. Yes, tests come our way as Christians. Tests come our way as followers of the Lord. We, we are faced with a whole lot of temptations in our lives as humans. But as the Lord left us alone, the Lord has not left us alone. Now, brothers and sisters, I want us to look at a brief description of what tests and temptations are. Yes, a test is a set of questions or exercises or practical activities that are intended to measure our abilities, our skills, and our knowledge. Yes, that is what a test does. And so you see that a test has advantages for us. As a school a schoolboy, you have to write an exam. You have to write a test. Our employers and our, our parents, our teachers, always would like to give us tests so that they measure our level of understanding. They measure our ability and our competency. Yes, that is tests. But what are temptations? Yes, a temptation, however, is a strong desire to have or to do something, even though you know that that thing you shouldn't do. So you see, temptations are your own desires. Things that you know that you do not have to do, when you do them, they become temptations unto you. Christ, when he came to this earth, was tempted. Yes, when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, the evil one came to tempt him. And so he came and asked him to do many things. He asked him, knowing that Christ was hungry, to turn the, uh, the stone into bread. And Christ, knowing that that was a temptation, told the devil, he rebuked him, man must not live by bread alone. Yes, that is it. You do not have to live by bread alone. Yes, each time we are tempted to steal, to fornicate, to masturbate, my brothers, to masturbate, my sisters, to do things that are not acceptable in the sight of God, it means that we are tempted. From the definition, it is clear that temptations are by our choice. If you are tempted and you yield to it, it is by choice. It has been said that man cannot run away from temptation. So if you are tempted and you fall, it means that you have made God a God who is not truthful. You have disappointed God. God, in his love, has not left us alone. He knows that as humans, we shall be tempted. And so, he makes a way for us. In the book of James chapter 1, verses 12 to 18, he tells us what we have to do with temptations. Tests come from different sources. Other people would like to test us. Other people would like to test us to see how 
firm we are standing. But today, I want to tell you that when tests come our way, our only refuge is the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother and sister, are you being tempted in any way? Are you being tempted in any particular situation in your life? Are you being tempted to do something that is contrary to the word of God? Today I have come to you with the promise in James chapter 1 that the Lord has a solution for you. The Lord has an answer for you. Yours is to read this scripture and to practice it so that you will daily give yourself, yield yourself to the directions and dictates of the Holy Spirit so that you shall be victorious over sin and over all these temptations, like Christ was able to triumph over these temptations. I pray the Lord blesses you. I pray the Lord be with you so as you try to win victory over this temptation. And at the end of the day, glory will be given to the Lord. God bless you. Shall we pray? Father, I pray my brothers and sisters into your hand. Help them so that they shall be able to win victory over sin. Thank you so much for the answer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for staying with us. Once again, you can reach us on plus 233-244-673528 or 244 or email us at radio at vvu.edu.gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana PO Box AF595. Adenta Greater Accra Region. I believe today's magazine has been a blessing. May the good Lord's hand be in your life. Amen. Remember to tune in same time tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>